Alongside the missiles and guns, there is another weapon of war that is largely unseen. Older and cheaper than anything else. It rips apart lives and terrorizes communities just as effectively. When the Russians occupied this tiny village west of Kyiv, it wasn't only homes they destroyed. Prosecutors are investigating the rapes of two women here. Lana, not her real name, is one of them. The commander came to see me, Lana tells me. He said, you see my men have been drinking and now they want to have some fun. She shows me the road she was dragged down by a soldier the same age as her youngest son. Her neighbor was taken too. My neighbor was raped by a soldier upstairs, says Lana. I was raped on the ground floor. How hard is it to carry on after something like this? Mentally, they destroyed me. I wake screaming at night. I take sedatives. I have nightmares that he's coming back to look for me. He made me do things I feel ashamed of even talking about. I don't want to talk about the things he made me do. But she is speaking out because she wants other women to report what the Russians did to them. Shame and trauma make unlocking that a deeply sensitive process, but the dreadful practicalities mean the first sign is often an urgent request for a morning after pill. Me and lots of my colleagues working in Kyiv and Kyiv region have seen girls with a different physiological and psychological signs of violence after staying on the occupied territory and being in contact with Russian soldiers. And it's when you examine them, you see there are injuries? Yes. All he can do is offer a psychologist's number in the hope they will seek help. But how can you stop when simply getting your children to safety is taking everything you have? At this refugee center in neighboring Poland, they're trained to help, but building trust here isn't easy. This country's opened up its borders to Ukraine's refugees, just as it shut down access to abortion. On one hand, I love to help all of these women because they really need abortion and I, you know, I, um, I have to help them. But in another hand, for me, uh, it's a very dangerous situation because if I uh, help them, I can go to the jail. So even if a Ukrainian woman has been raped by a Russian soldier, you still face prison if you try to help her get an abortion? Yes. This sexual health charity is trying to fill the gaps by running a podcast and a Ukrainian helpline. Some of the calls are almost too dreadful to describe. There was also this case of a 12-year-old. Well, we somehow managed to help, thankfully. She was uh, raped and she didn't tell anyone. There was uh, an infection raging inside of her and she needed not only treatment for the infection, but also a surgical intervention to rebuild her internal organs. In Ukraine, as every week passes, prosecutors are uncovering more cases of a crime that too often stays in the shadows. But with women like Lana determined not to let their rapists go unpunished, there is at least the possibility of justice ahead. Rachel Younger, ITV News, Kyiv.